The state line between Mississippi and Tennessee was nothing more than a cesspool of corruption for the full six years that Buford Pusser served as sheriff of McNary County. We know this because the movie Walking Tall told us so. <laughs> well, the movie Walking Tall got it wrong. Stay tuned. That's right. The movie Walking Tall got it wrong. The state line was only in existence for about 18 months during Sheriff Buford Pusser's first term. There were only two people that uh, were operating at the state line at that time, and that was Louise Hathcock and Toehead White. Buford wasn't responsible for taking either of them down. Federal authorities and Tishomingo County law enforcement officers arrested Toehead White for the uh, three-state moonshine operation and then, of course, there were other charges filed against him for his participation in the red carpet lounge robbery. A lot of people think that Buford Pusser shut down the state line when he killed Louise Hathcock on February 1st, 1966. But, of course, that's not really the case because the IRS was about to seize the uh, state line properties for non-payment of back taxes on the Jack Hathcock estate, and there was nothing Louise could do to stop it. So, you know, the idea that uh, Buford shut the state line down is just uh, completely wrong. Now, after that, most of uh, the rest of Buford's law enforcement career was spent just about like any other county sheriffs would be, solving the same types and handling the same duties that any other sheriff would carry. As we previously discussed, Buford was allegedly taking payoffs from the Shamrock and White Iris. The only time it seems that these establishments were subject to a raid was in December of 1964 when Buford had to participate in a multi-jurisdictional raid that was conducted by the states of Tennessee and Mississippi and the county's authority therein. Suspecting that Buford was being paid by these establishments, he wasn't given the opportunity prior to the event to advise the state liners that a raid was about to take place. And that raid went off as planned. After the shooting death of Louise Hathcock, it didn't take Buford long to make other headlines when he soured relations between his department and state officials with the Alcohol Beverage Commission in Tennessee, accusing them of playing politics and raids and leaving him out of raids in his own county. He suspected that Buford was advising establishments of raids they were about to conduct in McNary County. He would say that he was being left out of those raids because he was a Republican. With Jack and Louise Hathcock both dead now, the IRS would soon seize the state line properties. Now these were valuable properties, worth a lot of money. W.O. and Howard Bunch realized this. W.O. Hathcock and Howard Bunch bought the uh, state line properties as a real estate investment. They were able to purchase those from the IRS for pennies on the dollar. You sell those properties, you make an excellent profit. Near the same time, Junior Smith had become interested in some property that lay behind the Shamrock. There wasn't any access to it except for a private road that Jack Hathcock had built uh, when he built the Shamrock. It was a gated uh, road, had a fence across it. Junior kept shooting the locks off in order to gain access to the property. This was going to cause problems between he and W.O. It was another hot summer's day at the state line. W.O. was out by the pool at the Shamrock Motel when he heard a gunshot. He looked up, saw Junior Smith, Hayward King, and Lester Derrick, all out by the gate where they had shot another lock off. W.O. retrieved a firearm, went out, and confronted the three men. Not only were words changed, but gunshots followed. W.O. was shot in the ankle, Junior Smith took a shot to the ear. Lester Derrick was hardly injured at all, but Hayward King took 25 to 30 pellets in his head and torso from a shotgun blast from W.O. Of course, Sheriff Buford Pusser was called to the scene of the shooting. Arrests were made. All four men made bonds of $500 before being released from jail. Hayward King 
had to spend some time in the hospital over the incident. If you'd like to see these installments continue, please like, comment, share, or subscribe to this channel. After this, things around McNary County would be normal for a while. Buford would have his usual moonshine busts and raids, things like that, but nothing terribly serious. During this time, Buford would have raids of his own, and he would also assist state agencies with their raids. I tell these and other stories that are available in my book, Buford Pusser, The Other Story, that's available at Amazon. In early December 1966, the one man that Buford feared the most walked away from prison where he was serving a sentence for the three-state moonshine operation as well as the red carpet casino robbery. In early January of 67, Buford claimed that he was trying to stop a speeding vehicle near the state line. As he walked up to the vehicle, shots were fired. Buford was hit twice in the cheek, once in the forearm, and one shot grazed his abdomen. Many people, however, believe that those wounds were self-inflicted in an effort to draw attention to Toehead White so that authorities could find him and arrest him as soon as possible. If this was indeed Buford's plan, it worked. Toehead quickly turned himself in to authorities and was returned to prison. He feared that if he didn't, the first cop he ran across might shoot and kill him. The next big event in McNary County was the day that Paul David English shot and killed Stanley Fowler. Years later, English would tell me that he and Fowler had had words the night before at a state line establishment. He said the next morning, Fowler showed up at his father's residence. English was at home on leave from the military. Not wanting to put up with any more of Fowler's guff, he said he simply reached in the door picked up a rifle that was there, and shot Fowler right off of his motorcycle in an act of cold-blooded murder. The months that followed this are filled with events that led up to the alleged August 12th ambush in which Buford was wounded and his wife Pauline was killed. In the next installment, we'll start to discuss those events.